React is amazing. We have all heard about its best practices and design patterns, clean, reusable, and scalable components. Sounds very dreamy, right? But here is the twist. Best practices can sometimes lead to worse nightmares. That's right. If you overdo it, your reusable components can turn into unmaintainable beasts. Today we are tackling this heads on. I will show you how to spot these anti-patterns, avoid over-engineering and build components that strikes the perfect balance between simplicity and the power. So let's go from what have I done. So this is so beautiful step by step. And this is where every React Dev starts. Meet our reasonable, reusable button. It is clean, it is functional, it is like that one friend who is always on time. You have got variants like primary and secondary as well, sizes like small and medium, and a couple of basic sprocks like disabled and on click. It is simple, maintainable, easy to test, but then life happens of course stakeholders ask for new features designers add icons loading spinners rounded corners animations and before you know it you have got this yeah i know it is scary right so this is our stage two and this is our new button version two at first glance it looks great it's got icons with positions on the left and the right, loading state with a spinner, rounded styles, shadow elevation, and even animation. It is a versatile, but it is also starting to creak under the weight of all these props, which become actually problems now. So, prop overload, do we really need 12 props just to render a button? Also, Code duplication. Styles are repeating everywhere. If you want to tweak one, just good luck with that. Then debugging nightmares as well. Imagine figuring out why the shadow isn't showing while sifting through a mountain of logic in your components. And this is where the cracks start to show, but don't worry, it will get even worse. Meet your button version 3. There we go. So say hello to button v3. At this point, our button is practically running the office here. It's got ripple effects, gradients, tooltips, uppercase text, hover colors, focus rings, just name it whatever comes in your mind. Conditional rendering is so complex. It feels like building some spaceship. Now we have turned a simple button into a Swiss army knife here. Testing become a nightmare. You will need a separate test cases just for the tooltip delay and your handle size balloons and your app slows down. And worse of it all, this button is no longer reusable because it is too specific. Now, Listen, learn, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So how we can fix this? Let's rebuild this the right way with composition. So the secret is breaking things into smaller single purpose component that works together. Here is how we can do that. First thing, for example, we can build a simple base button component. The base button does exactly what you expect, nothing more nothing less. This keeps the core functionality clean and simple. And as you can see, all it does, it just handles the variant and the size and then pass on the props like on click function and also the values within inside our button. Now let's say we want to add complex features through composition. You need a spinner. Okay, let's wrap it. You need an icon, wrap it. And here is an example. We define two different components. One is called loading button and other one calls icon button. And what we are doing, we're just reusing the actual base button. Then we are adding the extra properties or props that we need for that specific button. And you can see that's how it works. Small and focused components are easy to maintain and test. Reuse through composition 
combine features as needed. So every component, it does what it is supposed to be doing. Then, of course, you have readable and scalable and junior devs won't run away from your app screaming. So remember, the goal is to keep your base components simple and focused. Use composition for complex features. Resist the temptation to add every feature just in case uh, some stakeholder come and ask you for something. Then the last is to break your big problems into small reusable solutions. And finally, when in doubt, ask yourself, will future me thank me for this? If the answer is no, it is very simple answer then to you. So that is it, friends. If you have ever built a component that spiraled out of control, let me know in the comments because we have all been there. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more no-nonsense React tutorials. Until next time, keep it simple and keep on coding.